Opan Gangnam Style Gangnam Style Hey everybody, Ashley Bottoms from Bottoms Up Appetite for Discussion. And we are here at the Anime Boston 2014. This place is absolutely insane. There is so much going on. I, this is one of the most packed events I attend. And as you can see, everybody that lives in their mother's basement and has lots of money to spend on plastic and lace is here. And I mean that in a good way. I just got here a little while ago. I've been getting myself into the vibe, taking pictures, getting involved, and just making a lot of new friends. And if you're not here, you're really missing out. A lot of people think it's geeky, but I gotta tell you, it's very cool. And I'm really happy to be here again. So let's uh, take a walk around and we'll show you the Anime Boston 2014. Let's go. Open Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. Op, 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 op. Open Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. Op, 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 op. Open Gangnam Style. I just wanted to know how you got into the voiceover for video games because I am a huge fan of video games. Uh, Mortal Kombat, Castlevania, and Tekken being three of them. I got into. Well, I was always a gamer, and so I at least had that angle going for me. Aren't we all? <laughs> I wish. Um, so I started out with the anime video. Got into that, started when I was 21. Had a couple gigs at first, like one gig a year, two gigs a year. It was really a slow start until things sort of picked up exponentially. Um, but how I segued into the video games is one of the companies that I was doing anime dubs for uh, seeing which way the wind was blowing, and this was, you know, back when Suncoast was still a thing and Genion was still a company. They were doing most of Genion stuff. They figured, well, we should diversify just to, you know, play it safe, which was a good idea ultimately, because then we had the anime bubble burst back in the day, and a lot of companies didn't pull through. So we figured, hey, if we're doing anime dubs, we might as well do import games, do, you know, JRPGs and stuff. That would be right in our wheelhouse. <clears throat> Dubbing is what we're already I doing. I read that so. you started doing voices in school and you got in trouble for it. Oh, yeah. Could you touch base on that a little bit? Give oh, us a little story. I was the sweet little girl that, you know, was very quiet in class, but as soon as the teacher turned around, I was throwing my voice over to the other end of the room, and she'd turn around, and I'd just be smiling and sweet, and after a while, even my teachers caught on to my repertoire of psychosis and all the voices in my head. And... Um, it, I remember at one point, I think it was uh, my third grade teacher, Mrs. Carr, told me, you will never amount to anything making, playing with those voices and making fun of people. And I thought, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at um, me now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I was mis you know, mischievous. I was, uh, I was always looking for an audience. And at the same time, many actors are actually kind of shy until you're behind a character that you can come you know, fully into your comedic you know, form in. And um, I, just, I just tried really hard to be a good student, but at the same time, I had an audience in a classroom. I wanted to entertain the class, too. So um, eventually, I got to write, I think it was my fifth grade or sixth grade play, and I cast all my friends playing my characters, and they couldn't understand why I was so frustrated with them that they couldn't do my, all my voices, my Jersey accent, and my, my British girl, and um, my Southern kids, and they just couldn't understand, you know, I'm doing, I'm reading the lines, you know, so I was kind of a control freak even then. <laughs> <laughs> Directors. <laughs> I wanted to know what advice could you offer to someone who's trying to get into the business that is probably at an impasse. I'll say, find something artistic that makes you happy that you can do. It doesn't have to be your job. It's great when it can be your job. But if you have to work a crap job that isn't you at all to be able to afford a thing that really is you, then do that. It's worth it. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, acting is tough because someone has to say yes. You know what I mean? It's, 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 a, it's fun what I do, but it's a business and there's money involved. It's not like 
going and picking up a guitar, or singing a song, or doing something, you know, with the physical arts where you can just say, you know what, I need this. This nourishes me. I'm going to do it right now for myself and no one can stop me. So usually I tell people, like, pursue the acting as a career, but figure out something to make you happy if that doesn't pan out because you need that. Was there ever a video game uh, voice role or an anime role that got away, something that you wish you had either tried off for or did and didn't get that you said, man, I wish I had gotten it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there have been a few. There's been... Um I mean, really, as an actor, you want every role, and it's a numbers game, so the more you audition, the more you, you are cast, but um, I've been lucky that I've been just cast without audition, without auditioning for many roles, including Faye Valentine, and uh, uh, Haruhi and Haruhi Suzumiya and, and Konata, and several of the roles, my bigger iconic roles, uh, usually it was Bandai, they've been so good to me, had me in mind and just put me in the part, so I've been very lucky with that. But there's a few. There's a, a Perfect Blue was a real kind of dark film that I made uh, with Kevin Seymour and, and Animes and Zero Limit. And um, I wanted to read for the lead role on that. And they would not let me. And I just couldn't understand it. I was furious. I was like, what? I can't, I can't even audition. No, no. We went, they had me playing the villainous. I played the antagonist in that. And uh, in hindsight, sir, I got it as soon as we started recording it that that was really good for me. It stretched my range. And to be able to play a villain, somebody kind of grotesque, um, was a deep psychological study. And I really, really grew from that. I mean, it's always been, things always, I believe, work out for a reason. They always have an upside. I tend to be optimistic, but I'm certainly sardonic at the same time. But I find that any of the ones that got away usually pre present other opportunities. Alright, that is the anime Boston 2014. I had a blast. I have fun going to these things. I know I usually I kind of pick on the whole genre, but it's a lot of fun. And you know, you'll have a great time if you come down. It's it's really hard not to get into it once you see all these people that are into it. So I really recommend this. It is a great escape. It's a lot of fun and you will have a great time. So you want to check it out by going to the website on top of the screen. Let them know that I sent you. Tell them Ashley sent you. They'd love to hear that. Be sure to tune into my show, Bottoms Up, Appetite for Discussion, every Wednesday evening, live at 7 p.m. on the Gag Order Network. As always, I'm Ashley Bottoms. Keep your enemies close. Keep Ashley close up. Until next time, Yakame! Open Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. Op, 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 op. Open Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. Op, 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 op. Open Gangnam Style. Hey, sexy lady. Op, 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 op. Open Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style